Hello travel dreamers and welcome back to another Nomadic Monday where we teach you how to quit your soul sucking job and transition into digital nomad life. In today's episode, we're gonna be talking about how to stay safe while traveling the world. Number one, check your government's official travel notice. A travel notice is an update that your government will put out letting you know of any potential terrorist attacks, any potential dangers in regards to outbreaks and epidemics, so on and so forth. So it's really where you're gonna be able to get the most up-to-date information about the particular area of the world you're trying to travel to. Now with this, there are gonna be different tiers of travel warnings that they put out. For the sake of the example, we're gonna put low, medium, and high. Medium travel warnings is usually when we do a little bit more of our own research into the situation. We look at local news, we look at some of the different websites that other travelers who have been to the area as of recent, and then high travel notices are where we really do take what the government says to heart. The only time we've ever gone against that is when we went to Gili Tramangan, and the reason we did that is because we were in the area and we had talked to a lot of locals and they were telling us about how the travel notice was essentially wrong. Number two, we recommend that you get all of your vaccinations prior to leaving for your trip. Before we left for our trip, we ended up getting the, the entire Hep A series and our typhoid vaccines, but for further information, we recommend that you visit the CDC website so that way you can get the most current information when looking at a particular area of travel. For us, they also recommended getting our rabies vaccine, which we should have gotten back home because it's been a year and a half. And, uh, oh, that's right, we still haven't gotten it. So keep that in mind. Even though it may be more expensive and you do have access to healthcare out here, that is quite good, still get the vaccines before you leave. Number three, make sure you do not leave without travel insurance. We did not do this at first, and we had a friend who was very nice, Matt, thank you, uh, and really kind of spoke the fear of God into us, and it worked. The reason that we have travel insurance, and we recommend that you get it before you even leave, is because there are a lot of activities that you're gonna be doing out here that could go wrong. There are gonna be a lot of times where you're taking a sketchy bus ride on the side of a mountain, and if something goes wrong, you need to be able to pay for it, and you can't just pay out of pocket when it costs you $45,000 for a three week hospital stay or X, Y, and Z. I'm not really sure if that's how much it costs, but the hospital visits can get expensive out here. So do not leave for your trip without travel insurance. We ourselves use Allianz insurance and they have been amazing. They not only give us health insurance, but they also give us different types of travel insurance like lost bag coverage, uh, flight cancellation, they'll even fly us back if a family member passes away. So look at all the details that you're signing up for when looking at travel insurances, and I'll put the information for ours down in the link below. Number four, have all of the numbers that you need for local embassies, for local emergency numbers, and for local contacts if you have the ability to have them. The reason we recommend this is because there are gonna be situations when on the road where back home we would call 911 for an emergency, here you may be calling 999 or 662, whatever the number may be, you need to make sure that you have access to that. And if you're not learning the numbers of your embassy and the emergency services, wherever you go, make sure that you have that accessible in your phone. We actually end up using an app called Travel Smart by Allianz, our health insurance, and it's a completely free app and it actually takes your location and has all of the different emergency contacts and emergency services numbers listed for you. So that way you can have them in your phone and ready to go and you don't even have to worry about saving it to your contacts. Number five, give your itinerary to family and friends back home. The reason we recommend that you do this is even though they're not going to have direct access to you and they may be a 25 hour travel day away, it is always good for someone to know exactly where you are. A wonderful example of this is when we were stupid and went into the Catball War Tunnels. If you guys want to see that vlog, just click the link up above. But to make a long story short, there was only four of us. We were the only four that knew where we were going. We went really far off the beaten path, potentially landmine areas which was, again, stupid on our part, but we told no one we were gonna be there. We didn't even tell our families. And we definitely corrected the situation when later, a couple weeks later, we did the Hajan loop. We made sure that we did not make that mistake again. And every day that we were on a motorcycle for eight hours, at the end of it, I called my mother. So when you guys are looking at doing travel trips abroad, and if it's a, definitely something that's more risky, make sure that you're keeping your family updated because if they don't hear from you, then they'll know to contact the local authorities. Number six, 
avoid taxis and tuk-tuks. The reason we recommend that you do this is because they're very avoidable scams that are associated with that kind of transportation. Now, there are going to be situations in which you can't avoid them. For instance, when you land in Thailand, you have to take a taxi because you cannot take a grab from the airport. They just don't let grab drivers in. And so with that, anytime that you do have to take a taxi, make sure that they have a meter that is running or a predetermined rate that you two agree upon. If your taxi driver is ever starting to drive and they're like, oh, no, 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 we'll figure it out wherever we're going, do not let them keep driving. Usually what happens in these situations is if you don't have a predetermined rate or you do not have a meter running, you'll get to your destination and they'll have some absurd rate and you're obligated to pay it. You didn't have the meter running and you didn't confirm a rate prior to leaving. And that's kind of a common scam that's out here in Asia and I believe in other parts of the world. If you do find yourself in this kind of situation, don't be afraid to speak your mind and get out of the taxi. If the taxi driver is driving off and they're refusing to start the meter and they're refusing to set a predetermined rate, you tell them, stop, I wanna get out. Stop, I wanna get out. I will happily wait in that car until that man opens the trunk so I can get my bags and leave. And we've had to do that before, only once, but we've had to do it because there have been many situations that we were actually able to prevent. So we were able to be like, no, if you don't use meter, we leave. And they're like, oh, okay, 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 we use meter. Again, use the tips that we've given you and you guys will be fine. Number seven, don't wear flashy items that would make you a target for thieves. Now, this doesn't apply for 95% of the time but the 5% of the time that you're going to be in a situation where you shouldn't have that flashy jewelry on, you're gonna feel very uncomfortable and very unsafe. So when Annette and I travel, we simply wear our wedding bands. Annette will wear earrings and maybe a necklace or a bracelet, but nothing too flashy. We actually have friends that travel full time with a lot of silver jewelry and it's a little more discreet, so I think they haven't had any issues with it, but they've been out on the road for quite a few months and they've had no problems. But there is one type of thief that we cannot help you from. And it's these. These little buggers stole my shoe last night because I left it outside and I have no idea where it is. And they chewed up the other lace, didn't you? I love it. Get your rabies shot because you're gonna wanna hold all of the cute animals out here. Number eight, make sure that you keep all of your pockets closed and you're aware of what's in them at the start of the day. We recommend having zippered pockets, Velcro pockets, or taking a fanny pack or backpack. I know that kind of seems a little excessive, but when you go to places, pickpockets are a thing. And even though we don't encounter them a lot, at least for us back in Florida, out here, we've encountered them quite a bit. There was a great example of when we were in the Philippines last, there was actually a group of kids that tried pickpocketing us. One of them jumped on my leg, tried getting into my pocket, the other was pinching and slapping Annette's butt, and their ages didn't range outside of seven years to 11 years old. And so keep that in mind when you guys are traveling. Again, we recommend Velcro or zippered pockets and to be aware of what's in them. So that way, if someone bumps into you, you check your pockets before you leave that area. Sorry, these guys are so cute. I can't help it. Okay, he wants down. Number nine, keep a lock on your bag. This is gonna serve two purposes. The first purpose is it's gonna give you peace of mind, especially when you're traveling. When you are backpacking or living out on the road, a lot of your most valuable items are going to be in your backpack and you wanna make sure that that stays protected. So when you're going through airports, when you're going through buses, you need to make sure that you lock your bags and we recommend that you have a lock for every bag that you own. The second purpose is that they're gonna double as locks whenever you have to have shared accommodations. Now, Annette and I really do prefer having private rooms, but every once in a while when we go to a more expensive country, it's kind of unavoidable because we're we are traveling on a budget. And so with that, we're able to use our backpack lock as an actual locker lock because most hostels and dormitories do not actually provide you a lock, they just simply provide you a locker. Number 10, we recommend that you keep all of your important documents on you at all times with multiple copies. So we keep all of our original important documents in a travel bag that we have specifically for them and we keep them locked in our room. We keep another copy of all of these items such as passports, marriage certificates, immunizations, so on and so forth in our my actual wallet so that way I have it on my person at all time. And we keep a copy on our computer and a copy back at home with our families. And this includes more than just immunizations but it also includes credit cards, debit cards, other documentation like that. Now, 
with keeping those items on you, make sure you don't lose it because someone can have your very sensitive information. But we, we do that because it really does give us peace of mind that no matter what situation we're in, we have our important documents available. And there have been times where my wallet got wet getting off of a, a long tail boat, I had to throw away the papers. And then I lost the copy of my credit card that I had with us and I had to pay for a flight and had no other option of paying. So I had to call my parents and be like, hey, do you have that copy that we sent you? And they were able to pull it out and give us the number. So that is, again, something we recommend that you do with all of your important documents. And since we are all about value on the channel and we wanna make sure that you guys get the most out of these Nomadic Mondays, we've actually added an 11th item for you guys. Now, before we get into it, it is a little complicated and I really wanna make sure that you guys have the ability and time to sit down and really process what I'm about to say. Use common sense. The reason we say this is because you're going to encounter situations just like you would back home. If I'm downtown after I've had a couple beers and I have to go down one of two roads and one of them's a sketchy alleyway that's not well lit, I'm not going to go down the sketchy alleyway that's not well lit. Same exact thing applies abroad. There have been times where we've been walking and might I say completely sober and we have gone down the same way that we came but the way that we came was during daytime and now the way that we're leaving is at nighttime and we don't feel comfortable walking down that same road. And so we found alternate routes. So when you guys are, are traveling abroad, listen to your gut. If you get into a taxi and you get a bad gut feeling, listen to that. There was one time where we actually didn't listen to that and we got scammed in a taxi. And granted, it wasn't over much and we definitely overreacted, but it was our first scamming experience in Thailand. I'll put it up abroad. But anyways, when you guys are traveling, listen to your gut and before we wrap up guys we actually have a question for you do you guys enjoy these nomadic mondays outside with a pretty background where there may be some background noise or do you prefer these nomadic mondays to be inside in a more sterile environment if you guys could give us a comment because we're kind of on the fence between the two there have definitely been a couple situations where we've had to re-record nomadic mondays because of the outside elements or we've just been like ah that's fine that was a really loud vehicle passing by so we want to know what you guys prefer if you could leave us a comment down below with that answer on that note make sure that you give this video a like hit the subscribe button so that way you get the rest of our nomadic mondays which come out every single week and get the rest of our vlogs that show you what it's like to actually live as a digital nomad and these beautiful places that we live in. But on that note, we will see you guys on our next adventure.